And joining us right now, Alan Turkheimer is in studio, a jury consultant with his company Trial Methods. Thanks for being with us this morning to kind of break down the particulars of this case. A lot of people are focusing on the fact that the jury's uh, made up of people who don't necessarily represent the population in the county where this actually happened. 11 white jurors, one black juror. What did happen? And, and was this actually uh, um, a selection that would actually the, pr the problem here is that so many people are thinking this was a discrimination case. Right. So jury selection is somewhat of a misnomer. It's actually jury deselection. Mm -hmm. The parties aren't picking who gets in the jury or on the jury. They're just saying who gets off. And so each side had a certain amount of peremptory challenges. You don't ha have to give a reason. Typically, and what happened was the three defendants had 24 of those and the prosecution had 12. Prosecutors used all 12 of those strikes on white jurors. The defendants they used, uh, I believe it was 11 out of 24, which is a high percentage, 46%, I think, on black jurors. And so what happened was there was a Batson challenge. The state uh, was, after they were doing their strikes, the prosecution said, you know what, the, the state is systematically striking black jurors. And the judge essentially agreed. It was, it was a strange uh, declaration because he said that, yeah, it looks like there's discrimination. But at that point then, the state gets to give a race neutral explanation and if it's accepted then the jury jurors are seated and it, it's not a high hurdle to give a race neutral explanation the prosecutor the state can say oh i just didn't like the way that juror looked at me oh i just didn't really think they could be fair and impartial but the judge has a lot of power and discretion so after the process 11 jurors are white and one is black but it does seem kind of interesting that just from the looks of things and then the fact that the judge said the words, there appears to be intentional discrimination, it would cause at least a, most of us to pause and say, well, you know, what is this here? And, and is this legal? And in the same breath that he said there was intentional discrimination, he was saying that all of the reasons that the, the defense laid out for each juror to be eliminated were legitimate and clear. So why even bring up the discrimination point? It's, it's very contradictory. You're right. So the judge said, yes, it, it appears there's discrimination, but it's, it, it's a two-pronged test. So the judge essentially acknowledged there's discrimination, looking at the numbers, but then legally the, the state or the, the defense is, is allowed to give a reason, and if it's race neutral, then the judge has discretion. Now, the judge could have said, you know, I'm not buying this. I don't think that's race neutral. I think this is pretextual. What you're saying here is not right. You are trying to systematically strike black jurors and then could have said, this juror, you're going to have to seat some of these black jurors. But the judge thought, no, I, I'm, I'm gonna, it's okay. Your, your explanations are fine. I accept it. We're going to move on. And this is going to be the, the strikes that you give. And I'm going to allow this jury to move forward. Do you think that some people watching this from the outside with no legal uh, experience would say, well, just because they picked just one black juror, does that mean that this is inherently biased by having all of these other white jurors? It feels tainted. If you have a community, Glynn County is 25% African American, so on a jury of 12, that would be three jurors. Having one doesn't feel right. So I can understand why people are upset about it. It's not an actual fair representation of the community. And one of the problems is, I've seen this, and there's, there's a lot of literature on it. When you have diverse juries, the, the deliberations are much more rich. They, they cover more ground. Assumptions are questioned. People bring to it different viewpoints, and even white jurors, they tend to scrutinize evidence more when they have to explain things in front of black jurors and, uh, and other minorities. So it's, it's a good thing that there's one black juror on the panel that um, will, will play a part in the process. But um, moving forward, it's also something to keep in mind. All hope is not lost for the prosecution. White jurors convict white defendants all the time. I mean, it's, it's certainly an uphill climb. And on the surface, it looks good for for the defense, but overall, I wouldn't give up if I was a prosecution. I think there's a good chance they'll get convictions. And in terms of any complications or mistrial claims that could happen as a result of the first statements made by this judge about discrimination, do you think that that could be foreseeable? I don't think there's going to be a mistrial. That would terminate the trial before there's a verdict. And because it was the judge's own ruling, I don't think he's going to backtrack and reverse himself. Possibly an appeal down the road, although it's, it's nearly impossible for the prosecution to appeal an acquittal. There, are, there could be federal charges and other ways to try to get these defendants convicted, but I, I don't think there's going to be a mistrial, and I, I certainly think an appeal would be challenging if there was some type of acquittal. A big case that a lot of people are watching. Thank you so much, Alan, for being with us today. Thank you. Nice oh, to be here. Nice to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.